Let's start podcast. Woo! What a beat for our intro, man. Man, that was crazy. That's uh, shout out Yuri Dubs from Shoot the Wind giving us that new beat there. Hope y'all enjoy that one there. Um, but welcome back to the Press Star Podcast. This is number episode number eighty, and I'm your host Vic, aka Mister Never Chillin', and I'm joined by my co-host Scoby One. How is everyone doing tonight? Shout out to Yuri for that sweet new intro that we were listening to. Yeah, that shit's fire. We're uh, test driving a couple of them right now, so maybe we'll uh, we'll drop the next one maybe next week, and we'll see how that one plays out. And then we got one more on the way after that, so really excited there. But uh, Marshmallow, welcome, bro. Uh, bring me that new intro He's, track. <laughs> he already wants to yeah. shake into that yeah. new beat. Yeah, I dropped it over at the Discord and gave them a, a little taste of it, and they were like, yeah, okay. And that's what he said. He was like, man, it's going to make me gyrate. <laughs> yeah, Good guy right there, man. But, um... Yeah, no, no, uh, lunatic oblivion this week. Uh, he's uh, out visiting family with his uh, f- his uh, wife, so hopefully he'll be back next week because he's been gone two weeks and we miss him here, man. It's always good to have all three of us here for uh, another great episode. But let's Thank start. You. If he does it again, if he does it again, we're just gonna have to get a, a, a like a laugh track, but it's just crickets, and then we'll just ask <laughs> Roger how he's thinking. Yeah, Roger, what games you playing? Crickets. Yeah, <laughs> I love the idea. But man, let's let's dive into what we've been playing. Uh, doesn't look like me and you have been playing much over the last week, but uh, let's dive into it though. Hogwarts Legacy is it still holding up really good, or is this a repetitive it's, game? It is. Uh, there's there's every game's gonna have a little bit of repetition. Like, hey, go do the thing, and then you go do the thing. Um, but still, nothing beats just hopping on my broom and flying around Hogwarts, <laughs> seeing all the cool Easter eggs, uh, seeing everything, and. Uh, uh, repetitive schmishmeditative i don't i don't care yeah uh so some of it they, there's some repeats but it's still holding up really really well uh the main story is really good yeah. um i have i've gotten i've gotten a lot of mismatch like going back and forth between main story side quests and then literally just flying around doing random stuff um so I haven't gotten too too far, but so far it's been it's been really good, and I love it so far. That's good. Yeah, I'm really excited to pick that up over the next couple of weeks. I mean, there's a ton of games coming out, which we're going to talk about here soon. But um, I did see that the um they did a little um honoring of uh, Hagrid, um the the actor who who passed away recently, and they did a little memorial inside Hogwarts Legacy, which was really really dope to see. So, um yeah, it was that's awesome. awesome. So what about uh, what about you? I'm seeing some uh, some lost in random. Yes, sir. That's my game. I'm streaming right now over on my Twitch at Mr. Never Chillin. Um, if anybody wants to check me out, it's a more of like an indie style game, but you play as this like little girl named Even, and her brother Odd got taken away by the king, or the queen, I should say, and you're trying to rescue her. Or your your sister or brother? I don't even know what they are to be honest. I just I don't want to be politically correct. I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings, you know. Characters but, and characters. <laughs> but um, you you eventually come across a, a die that like has arms and legs that kind of talks in its weird language, but it's from like an old time, like when there was a war with the the dice wielders and stuff like that. And you become a dice wielder, and you're trying to take down all these different um, areas because there's like there's one town, there's two town, there's three town, or whatever the hell they're called. But they're it's pretty cool. Nonetheless, I'm I'm like maybe like a quarter of the way through the game and. It's 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 been enjoyable. I, I really enjoyed like how the combat plays out because you have to you have to shoot these like crystals off the enemies, collect the crystals with the die. Once you save up enough of those, then you can roll your die, and then you then you can play cards based on how much um you rolled. So it's like a, a card system based with the dies, but like it's all like action at the same time. So it, it it's a really cool system. Nice. Um, but last up here though for you is uh call of duty modern warfare 2 and warzone 2 that's on my list as well we played a little bit of warzone 2 yes sir ashika island is 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 this it like is is this back or like what's going on here what's your thoughts so i never so when it comes to the maps like i've i've been the least vocal about being upset with any of the stuff i think i mean we got resurgence back good i we we at least have quads and solos now. Mm-hmm. No, we have solos. Uh, we, still I haven't don't have, we still don't have all of the things that we were promised on day one. But so far, I mean, the map's been holding up really well. I, I, I like playing it. I, I like dropping, and it's classic. It's classic rebirth. Like almost no matter where you drop, it is hot every single time. <laughs> you think you're it about is... to drop into a random <laughs> spot, and there's like a whole team there, two teams there, and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. And like with Rebirth Island, it used to be like you know, hey, we're we're all gonna drop top prison because that's the hottest place to drop. Mm-hmm. It's very clearly your best chance to have the high ground as far as the map's concerned. But here, no matter where you drop, 
it's going to be hot and there's plenty of uh routes to yeah. get you where you need to go uh so i think that was one thing that was really nice you're not fighting uphill to go downhill <laughs> yeah uh, as you were in rebirth uh you you're still going uphill and then downhill and then this and that but it's not it's not as bad as it was it wasn't so almost linear i want to say there's everything spread out nice easy like to pick which way you want to go, see what you can fight your way through, and and get there. Yeah. I still think it's good. At, people are gonna bitch. Yeah, for sure. That's that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, and I I hopped over to multiplayer actually for a little bit, and I was running Dome from Modern Warfare Three, the re remake of that, and then um the 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 museum map that was in the beta that was brought back, and they they, they play fun, they're really good. But what was fun is I did check out ranked play with um some guys over at Shoot the Win since I used to be a part of the official team that I took a step back from, but I was like, man, I picked right back where I left off because I was smoking kids in that thing. And they were like, don't get too excited. You're still a low rank, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't care what rank I am. I can pick the sticks up and, and, and rock with anybody. <laughs> like, that's just how I am with multiplayer. But it, it was it was fun. But yeah, that ISO Hemlock, that that gun is, is OP both in Warzone and multiplayer. And it already got removed from uh, ranked play. Like, it's already, like, yeah. it's, it's too overpowered. It's it's disgusting. I, I hopped back in and I was doing the Dome twenty four seven uh mm -hmm. playlist and like I ended up it was like I was I was thirty one and like twelve with like three minutes and ten seconds on the hard point just with the <laughs> ice. So it was just it was nasty. Yeah. It was absolutely nasty. Yeah, it, it's good though to have another gun that's gonna compete both with the M four and the and the tech attack 56 mm -hmm. so that's definitely good but to round out the games played i've been touching a little bit here and there with lego star wars skywalker saga i'm still on um i'm on episode three so revenge of the sith and it, it plays out just like the movie so it, it, it's fun but i'm not trying to do all of the side content in the game i'm just kind of just trying to run through it just because i just want to enjoy the story from the lego perspective well uh, make sure you don't tell us what happens yeah, so, I know. I no mean, yeah, I don't want to spoil nothing, you no know. Spoilers, yeah. <laughs> but enough of what we've been playing. We actually got a pretty solid um, release schedule coming out over the next week with games. Um, which one of the, of these? What are we got? Five games here coming out that you're most excited for? It's I gotta I gotta give it to Destiny. I gotta give it to Lightfall. Um, okay. Lots of lots of lots of the the new DLC that's dropping. Uh, what Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Um. I'm talking to a lot of people that I know that are playing Destiny and everything like that. Everyone is absolutely hyped for this. Uh, and they are just so excited. It's going to bring uh, the new Shadow subclass. It's going to bring a lot more to the storyline of things that you kind of yeah. see from Destiny 1 and bring things full circle. And, I mean, nobody can make a trailer like Bungie can make a trailer. Yeah. That trailer so, was fire. I, <laughs> yeah, it absolutely was. Um, so I gotta, I gotta go with the Destiny 2 Lightfall. Wu Long Fall, 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 uh, Fall <laughs> Dynasty has been looking good. Yeah. Um, I've been, I've been looking up on that, and that seems, that seems like that's gonna be another, another fun one. Mm -hmm. What about you? What are you thinking up on this list? Um, the, the, I mean, this was a really tough one because I'm probably guaranteeing that I'm playing three out of the five games here. Um, but Scars Above has been a game I've been really following that I'm really eager to check out. Um, it's gonna be one of the games I play on my stream as well, but. Um, Leap was a recent one that was recently announced that uh, it's coming to, to console and this is like a new shooter. So I'm really eager to see if we have another shooter in the, in the realm to see if it's going to give me something to do outside of Call of Duty. But yeah, Wolong Fallen Dynasty has also been a game I've been following and I'm really excited for this. But the best part of this is Scars Above, Wolong Fallen Dynasty are both coming to Game Pass Day 1 so it allows me to play them as soon as possible, which is good. But and Game Destiny, Pass just stays hidden. Yeah, but Destiny 2 Lightfall, I do time. agree, or uh, is a really solid um, DLC that's dropping. And I was a huge fan of Destiny. I just never had a group of friends that wanted to play and grind and mm -hmm. continue to really go through that same loop over and over because the story, the the lore, the the gunplay, the mechanics, everything in Destiny is a really like really good game. It's just whether you want to keep doing the same mission over and over and over. That's yep. all it is. Yeah, that that end game grind is is just got a lot of people like mm, you're there for you're there for your story you're there for you're there to do all that good stuff and once you start hitting that grind point it's just mm, right real real kind of rough yeah so we got destiny 2 lightfall dungeons of aether and scars above all releasing on tuesday leap is on um uh what thursday so the other ones are are, are tuesday and then will long fallen dynasty comes out what is that friday so big big week ahead of us for a uh, really solid game so Really looking to check those out. But moving on to our industry news, some 
pretty interesting stuff here. Um, we're going to kick it off. Nonetheless, we got Microsoft is in the news day in and day out, and they're raising the cost of the Xbox Series X and S consoles in Sweden specifically from 5,695 sec, which is about $550, to 6196, which is 599, which is really pricey, honestly. And then the Series S is 3595, which is three dollar or 347 dollars to 3894, which is 376. Um, so we all knew the console prices were going to go up. They've already done it in like different countries already, um, and already the PlayStation, the Nintendo, the Quest, like every other platform has gone up in price as well. So it's it sucks to see, but I guess the company's got to do what they got to do. Otherwise, they're going to start and taking a massive still... hit. I mean, it's still not as as big of a of a raise as they that they probably could have or wanted to, but still, I mean, to see it, you hate to see it. Free video games for all. Accessibility <laughs> is accessibility is numero uno. Exactly. So. But man, what a big big week in news for the uh, Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. Man, this is a lot of information here, but we're going to kick it off with two different union groups basically siding with this deal, saying that um, the, the Uni Global Union calls for regulators to consider the impact to the labor market and consumers, basically saying that they understand the toxicity that's going on in the labor force over at Activision Blizzard, and if Microsoft takes over, hopefully the toxicity goes away. And that is the idea. And the consumer, just to be able to make, make games more accessible to players, whether it's Game Pass. And then if it's on Game Pass or on Xbox, that means you can play it on, on cloud, my PC, the, the console. And anywhere that has a screen, I'm, I'm basically going to be able to play this. And with them bringing it to Nintendo and other, other platforms that don't even have Call of Duty is even better. And then uh, a union, which is p basically part of Activision, also told the EU that life would be much better if they were under Microsoft. Because they're... They had, they had to form this union because of how bad the workplace was. So now they want a better workplace all the way around through and through so they don't have to worry about dealing with those issues. Um, but some other news that came out with it, Xbox has now officially signed the 10-year legal agreement with both NVIDIA and Nintendo. This one was interesting, though, because with the NVIDIA agreement, they're bringing basically all of the Xbox Game Pass, Xbox games to the NVIDIA GeForce Now subscription as well. So, that's, so you don't no longer have to have Game Pass and the Nvidia GeForce. You're, you can just have GeForce if you really want to, because that'll include all of their games. And but Nintendo, this is really just backing it and saying, "Hey, we promise to bring you Call of Duty and any other Activision Blizzard games to your platform." And Nintendo hasn't had a Call of Duty since 2008-ish, maybe. Yeah, like, like it's been a long time. Wasn't it like it would, yeah? It was like World of War, World at War, or something like something that. Like that. Something, something a yeah. long time ago. So it'd be really cool. I'm just curious to see how that plays out. Really, the talks is all right. Well, how are you going to bring Call of Duty to the Nintendo Switch, which already struggles to play games? Are we getting a Nintendo Switch Pro soon? Are we getting the the next iteration of the Switch, or can they just do with the cloud version like they did with Dying Light 2 and 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 a, and a bunch of other bigger games that, in theory, cannot run on that platform? So. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how they. I mean, if they're promising to bring Call of Duty, I mean, first and foremost, that's your that's your numero uno promise, and I don't. They, there's, it's not going to be able to ha to handle it in the same sense that Xbox, PlayStation, and PC can. So, unless we're looking for something that's going to be, you know, Switch Plus, ad free Max coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to be uh, running with that and seeing. You know, hope to remain viable as a uh, as a as a call of duty player right and the other talks is so someone obviously someone's going to have to create this nintendo port of the game and they're like who in microsoft's catalog are they going to designate to make this and there there's been a lot of talks at 343 they could throw 343 into the mix to make this because of how bad they've been making games maybe this is their way of getting like a refresh or restart or whatever. Um, I've seen people talk about like Machine Games, who worked on like the Wolfenstein franchise, or or um, did ID Software, which made a uh, Doom. So I mean, they they definitely got a portfolio to pick from. Or if they just keep it in house and choose like one of the Activision Blizzard companies, whether it's Raven Software, or or I mean, they can do Toys for Bob or um, any any of the any of the or Binox, I think is another one that they have. Like there's tons of developers that work on Call of Duty outside of Act or um, Treyarch. Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer games. 
So I'm really curious to see how that is really going to play out. Who's going to be developing this Nintendo port of the future Call of Duties? Um, but the funny thing is, when these deals were getting signed during all the court hearings and stuff like that, Sony refused to sign their 10-year deal. They promised the exact same stuff. And it just blew my mind. Like, what what does Sony really want out of this? Like, Sony really just doesn't want Call of Duty to go underneath the uh, Xbox umbrella is what I'm understanding. Because yeah, they make a lot of money from it. Yeah, because then you start looking at, I mean, no matter what, you're you're on a PlayStation, but you're playing an Xbox game. You're playing an Xbox, quote-unquote, like a pseudo-exclusive. Like, yeah, uh, I think that's pride at that point. Yeah. I mean, because it's, I mean, it's pretty funny because, like, we talked about it before, the MLB of the show was a PlayStation exclusive. Now it's on Xbox, and guess what? It comes to Game Pass day one, three years in a row, and it's just like, that's a smack in the face to PlayStation. But... <laughs> they don't really care, I guess. The the developers that because they're bringing in more players than than normal. Um, but sticking in the longs with the Xbox PlayStation thing during this whole hearing, Xbox admits that they are losing twenty four to one in Japan in regards to console sales. So for every twenty four Playstations that are sold, one Xbox is being sold, and that's a really really big ratio, and um and that equates to about a ninety six percent lead over in Japan right now. And that that's really hard to recover from because like Xbox has been trying to capture that 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 Japan market with bringing over all of the JRPGs, whether it's the Persona coming to Game Pass, and the Yakuza franchise coming to Game Pass, and just giving people more of a reason to pick up that Xbox. Um, but one big thing though, over near Japan, China is apparently going to approve this deal, and I believe that this is one huge move because can't forget China is basically number one economic one of the number one economics in, in, our, in our entire world world economics so that's going to be a huge push for that um but to break it down for you all of the major competitors across console pc and, and cloud support the deal basically except for sony so give you a list here all of the companies that agree or want this deal to go through include nintendo nvidia tencent steam bandai namco ea epic riot games sega take two ubisoft and warner brothers and the only ones that are really against it here are sony google and some third party um companies over in, in china so it's just like why can't you just get on board bro like you're the, you're the odd man out now at this point it's kind of funny that google wants to disagree with something that's you know basically gonna make xbox uh almost non-competitive when it comes to <laughs> that it's really funny that google's disagreeing to that maybe they're they're trying to save some face yeah i'm i'm really curious too because like they just shuttered google stadia so they're no longer in that cloud gaming market yeah. so like why not try and support another company that's already doing it really well like microsoft has azure which helps um based with their cloud service program and all of the xboxes that run on that cloud server why can't Google hop on board with this and push technology in, 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 the, in the gaming industry forward? So, that was a lot of news in regards to that. Atomic Heart had some big news this, though, this week. Yeah, they have. So, um, first thing first with Atomic Heart is Ukraine's government wants this game pulled from all platforms due to the links that <laughs> the developers have with Russia. Now, mind you, the development team, Munfish, moved to cyprus while they while either before or during while they were when they were developing this game uh in order to try to stay out of that conflict uh, however they've been according to uh, some viewers feel that they were relatively uh not very descriptive when they were asked their stance on uh, yeah. what has been going on with russia and ukraine uh they ultimately said that they were a pro-peace organization personally as a gamer for the developer from gamer to developer that's what i expect you're 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 pro peace okay like make the game let me yeah. play <laughs> go i don't care where you stand i don't care like how you feel one way or another i mean unless it's egregiously wrong morally and ethically right uh, <laughs> but um it, it's just it's it's become very very politicized um, but they basically had really no comment on uh, the Ukraine on Ukraine's statement regarding that. Yeah. Um, which I think is a strong stance to take, and, and probably the right one. Ukraine's I want these guys taken out. They're just like, 
All right, they have an opinion. They you can have you, the boo -boo. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> you do you, boo boo. That's fine. Uh, have you looked at our sales yet? But with that, they've also been having some other issues. Uh, so Xbox, it has been unstable. Mm -hmm. uh, PlayStation, we're locked at 60 frames per second. PC, no ray tracing. Yeah. Um, now they do promise that they're going to be bringing that out, but. Uh, as of right now, no ray tracing on PC, which uh, has been a big bummer. Even though it has been be has been praised as still looking very, very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the runs locked at 60 frames per second, uh, and then uh, that's on the PS5, and then having unstable uh, frames on Xbox, they're kind of hit or miss. So they're looking at some praise here and there, and then mm -hmm. a bunch of this backlash. And then lastly, there was a. Uh, there was a uh, cartoon that they had come back and apologized for. Uh, so when after I was looking into this, um, basically when you go into your save rooms, your little your little safe spots, um, TVs basically they're generally white. Sometimes though they basically play the Russian equivalent of Tom and Jerry. Yep. For any uh, of our listeners or viewers who remember Tom and Jerry, but older cartoons. Older, <laughs> older thought processes, older, uh, older yeah. generations, older ways of thinking, um, which you know they probably weren't thinking about that stuff coming out in 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of the stuff was uh, was uh, widely unwelcomed, yeah, uh, and and very and some racist remarks and kind and uh, and connotations. But they did come out and apologize for that. Um, they you know understood they made a mistake on that one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, it just yeah. it just sucks to see there with this Atomic Heart because this game is already doing it's doing really well, like critically acclaimed. It, it looks really good, yeah. and but in the same breath, I haven't checked it out yet, and I don't I don't have a personal opinion on this game. But from this feedback, I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm waiting it because I'm playing this on my Xbox Series X when it whenever I do play it. So, and I do know there was a 12 gigabyte update that just dropped today, so maybe that helped flush out a lot of the issues and 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 whatnot. So, um, when I do check it out here in a week or two. It's going to be good to go and it'll run, it'll run really good. But it does suck to hear on the on the PC though it doesn't have ray tracing. Like of all all platforms, that's the one I should have it. Yeah, and like I said, they're going to bring it. But man, that's uh, that's something that you kind of want day one. That's mm -hmm. that's what what we're here for. Right. Uh, once again, I heard that I heard that it was I heard that it looked phenomenal. I've seen gameplay footage. It does look really really good. I just now can't wait to see how it's going to look when we actually have ray tracing. Exactly. Um but we can't forget this is an indie developed game so there are really 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 small studios so they can only focus on certain things and so much at one time. So we have 100% get it. So take your time, just make this game good, polish it out. Try to block out all the political mess that's going on behind it cuz we know one way or another there's different different political reasons and, and uh, leverages that people are trying to do with certain aspects. So, well, yeah, it's that, like I said with Call of Duty, everybody's gonna bitch. No matter Somebody, what, there's always gonna be people to bitch. Somebody, somebody's gonna bitch. No matter what, make your game, make the best game you can. Seems like they have been for being the uh, the small developer that they, that they are, uh, and can't wait to see how it comes out and see how everything uh, works out in the wash. Right. So it looks like we got a follow up over in Japan um, with some we good news do. here. We do. So following Nintendo's lead, uh, Japan-based employees at Sega are now getting salaries increased by up to 30%. Yeah, that's incredible. We love so, it. I, this, yeah, I have the same compliment or like remarks as I did last week. This is this is great to see. It's great. Happy happy workers, better work, happy workers, better production, better production, better product. It's it's very very simple. Better ingredients. Uh, I know we're still working pizza, on that over Papa here. John's. Better oh, ingredients. Hey, better pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's uh, there it is. Better ingredients, better pizza. That's yeah. the title of this one. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to see them uh, taking that and Nintendo for taking the lead. Still, big shout out to them for for doing what they did because I don't think anybody else really would have thought about that. Yeah. I mean, I like to think that they would, but honestly. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. What, what's rounding out here are with our industry news? So we've got some work from Konami. Return to Silent Hill, Hill, the film, has begun filming. We are getting Pyramid Head back. It's exciting. So, yeah, thoughts? Just, like, we, we think I'm I'm excited. I mean, and especially you and me, our, our PA boys, where that, mm -hmm. you know, the original Silent Hill was loosely based off of yeah. uh, Centralia, which is... Not that uh, far away. An hour north yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah. I used to drive through it coming down here when I would go for, like, drill weekends and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, 
oddly and weirdly like near and dear to the heart. So it's great to yeah. see something like this coming out. And who doesn't love Pyramid Head? Yeah, I'm just glad Silent Hill's back, man. Like when they had that showcase a few months ago, and they were like, the games are back. Silent Hill remake is coming back. We're doing a new movie, and we're bringing back the original um d- d- the the d- um director from the Silent Hill films. And I was just like. This is great. Like they're, they're catching up with times because Silent Hill was ahead of its time. Technology was old and oh, yeah. outdated back then, and now, like this is this is next level, all the way through. Whether it's a film or whether it's a game, this stuff is going to look great. But that was huge news with Pyramid Head coming back into this film because Pyramid Head is still hugely popular, even amongst like going to cons and stuff like that. People love to cosplay Pyramid Head. Oh, he's the icon. He's yeah. the, he's the icon, and it's, I mean. Can't wait to see what they do with him. Yeah, really, really. Eager. I I can't tell you it, last time I even saw a Silent Hill movie. Um, I know they had a bunch of them back then, so I might have to might have to check, rewatch those right before this one drops. So fun fact, I I did rewatch one a while back. The first one, Sean Bean in it. Of course, we mm-hmm. all know Sean Bean does what Sean Bean does best. But Kit Harrington is also in it. So Jon <laughs> Snow, okay, uh, completely shaven, short haired Jon Snow. Yeah, if anybody yeah. Uh, likes Game of Thrones between you know uh, seasons one through six, yeah, <laughs> so we'll we'll wait and see, man, for sure. But that's all of our industry news this week. Gaming news actually has some pretty solid things. So if you want to go ahead and kick us off here, and you know I I feel like we're starting everything off with Activision Blizzard, but we're looking at Activision Blizzard <laughs> again. But Diablo Four, we've all been waiting for it. We've got June, okay. But before that, we've got beta. We've got two of them. We've got early access. Uh, that's going to be March 17th through March 19th. Okay, and then we have open beta from the 24th to the 26th. So can't wait to see how that's going to be. Uh, can't wait to see, just get in and just. Are you just hopping? Go back. Are, are you hopping in to play Diablo 4 beta? You will catch me in early access, most likely. <laughs> yeah. So I think to get the early <laughs> yeah. access, you have to like pre-order the game or something it's like the, that. Yeah. It was the uh, deluxe edition. It was the. It was the, I can pull it up for you, because every time I come in, it's right there, just the staring thing. me in the face. <laughs> Here you it's go, the first thing. access. Except, sure except, for right, except for right now, the one time. <laughs> the one time I needed to be in my I'm face. Like, hey, not. yeah, the one time I needed to be here, right here in my face, <laughs> yeah. and it's not. And um, so, yeah, for for those who may not know, but me and me, Roger, and our friend Bruno, we we just recently played through uh, Diablo three and and Disney Princess. Um, we just recently played through Diablo three, and that was the first time I've ever played a Diablo game. So that was pretty fun, mm-hmm. and I'm really eager to check out Diablo four, um, with, with the crew and see the difference of three to four because three was a walk in the park. I don't I don't know about how like those games are really meant to be played. It was the biggest issue I had with the game. The game was entirely too easy for a four man team to just walk through the story mode like it was absolutely nothing. And I was just like, yeah, Where's the difficulty? <laughs> Where's the difficulty? I need some challenge. Like Sometimes... we were we, we were killing bosses before they can even finish their like line of of their dialogue. <laughs> You're just like and I already dead. Like it just shut up, bro. Yeah. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you sometimes you need a steamroll just to make yourself feel good, okay? Yeah. Just 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 take it. <laughs> but while going on with more gaming news here, uh so Hogwarts Legacy we know it. We love it. So uh, they're banned from speed running events. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. Banned from speed running events. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's the whole thing <laughs> with the whole like uh, JK Rowling. Like they don't want to, like the people who host these events don't want to have that backlash of dealing with, oh, you support <laughs> X, Y, and Z and you don't support this. And the, like, why can't we just keep politics out? Of, of, yeah. of stuff certain uh, things that don't need it we did uh you know everybody wants to follow the money nowadays and everybody thinks that jk Rowling's is just i mean jk Rowling in it yeah. now <laughs> uh but i mean she's got she's got a very like small percentage but like i don't know once again the people that spent their like their lives on this game are yeah. just getting shit canned because uh you know mean people right. on twitter like i don't oh, I don't, wow. I don't care about her thoughts like i'm i would i'm playing the game because i'm a huge harry potter fan i love that universe let exactly. me enjoy myself and because of that it's, yeah, and because of that it's still gonna be a great game people are still gonna buy it as a matter of fact they've already sold 12 million units <laughs> to the tune of 850 million dollars of revenue in two weeks That's so f- good job y'all can't speed run yeah. doesn't matter i made they 850 million dollars yeah. in two weeks and not to mention HBO Max TV uh, TV show 
they're looking at in the works. Mm-hmm. And the people that work on that are the current ones running The Last of Us. So we've already seen what they can do with an adaptation. Exactly. We've already seen what they can do with an adaptation. What else? Yeah. I mean, what, 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 what are they going to be able to do with, <laughs> with Harry Potter? Open world Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. So, 200 years. What was blowing my mind, though, when this news was coming out? Like, yeah, there's a TV show in the works. And, like, some of the headlines are, like, the, the clickbait shit. It was like, um, Warner Brothers is looking to turn Hogwarts Legacy into a, 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 a like, a, um, like an IP or, like, a, a series or something like that. Or, like, a franchise. And I'm like, it already is. It's called Harry Potter. Like, did, Harry Potter. Did, did they forget that this is in the Harry Potter universe? It's like if, like, something, like, they decided to call it the Mandalorian. We're like, we're going to turn this into, like, its new thing. And then, like, well, it's, it's not. It's part of Star Wars, bro. Like, it, it's not its own thing. What if we explored that Boba Fett character? Yeah, you And, know. like, gave him what he did. Yeah, and that's you all know. that matters. Dude, Nothing I, else I, existed. I, <laughs> yeah, it was blowing my mind. I, and another big, another big hitter from Warner Brothers. Okay, I see what you so did there. we had, we had, we had well, yeah, exactly. We had Port Key coming out with Hogwarts Legacy, and we have Mortal Kombat 12 coming out this year, set to release in 2023. This makes a huge year for fighting games. Uh, if anybody on here is a My Hero Academia fan, we've got the big three. Yeah, we've got Mortal Kombat, we've got Tekken, and we've got Street Fighter. All coming this out this year. year. That's fucking insane. What? I wish arcades were still a thing. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, and, and I'm not talking like Dave and Buster's. I mean, you go in, you smell your cheap cardboard pizza. Yeah. You go and you, you put a dollar, you get your four tokens, and you go and you play Mortal Kombat 12, Tekken 8, and Street Fighter 6. Yeah, that would be Looks nuts. All we need is a, a Smash yeah. Brothers 2 or whatever the next Smash Brothers to be announced from Nintendo. We got the, the, oh. the quadruplet here. Well, which one of these is going to have Waluigi? Because Smash Brothers won't. No, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Fun. Uh, I mean, probably Street Fighter Six because you can make whatever character you want in that game. You know what? I'm gonna custom make a Waluigi, and that's gonna be it. There it is. That's exactly what I'm. You heard it here. First so uh, we we've got some news with uh, what Sons of the Forest. Yeah, the game that we were alluding to last week that it released last week, and these numbers, man, are like mind blowing for this indie indie game because Sons of the Forest, those that may not know, is an indie survival horror game. And it already surpassed 700,000 views on Twitch. And that's also including 139,000 concurrent players on Steam. Um, within hours of the release. This wasn't like over like a course of a couple of days. This was within hours. And this game is just massive. It peaked at 350,000 concurrent players on Steam. Um, and just to put it into perspective, right? Stray and Cult of the Lamb, two of the biggest indie games last year, peaked at 60,000 each last year. 60,000 compared to 350,000 like that is mind boggling right there dude um but to make it even crazier end night game the studio behind this this lovely indie game has announced that they've already sold over 2 million units in the first 24 hours that is more than most a lot of triple a games this year and it's only on pc right now imagine if this game comes to the ps4 the 5 the the xbox whatever platform you're going to be on with xbox like that's the gonna switch. be switch. Yeah, the switch you know? eventually, because it, it comes to Xbox. It has to come to switch. Ten year agreement, yeah. even though they don't own yeah. it, but it has to. Not really, but <laughs> I'm sure that's how it'll work. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome to see though. Another another great indie game. This game will be something that we'll we'll be talking about for the rest of the year. This game will be talked about when um, the Game Awards comes around at the end of the year. It it'll be there for sure. But absolutely. Moving on to a not so indie developed game here. This is a big time game that used to play all the time Valorant um they started teasing their 22nd agent and um I haven't really hopped in like we talked about before in a, in a while but I'm just curious maybe maybe Marshmallow's still here here in the chat what what should be agent 22 like what type of of agent do they need do they need a uh like an aggressive player here do they need a more of a controller do they need somebody that's going to hold the front line like who what do we need here 22 agents later who do what do we need you... I think the bigger question is what 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 currently is lacking. If I it, uh, it I mean, just sucks because I haven't played in such a long time, but I, 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 I have, I've played one game. <laughs> I've played one game. I have no uh, I have no agent in this fight. 
Yeah. Okay. So okay. yeah, okay. I really don't have. <laughs> but I think when it comes down to that, uh, you know, what have people been asking for? What have people been crying out for? You know, what's been keeping meta Valorant players up at night? Right. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I guess I feel like they just need somebody that's going to maybe counter Chamber in a way, or or even because I, I heard Killjoy is back on the rise again, maybe counter her. So maybe deal with somebody that can like hack into certain weapons or abilities and like prevent them from doing things or i i i would say like probably like another controller agent would be uh really useful just to, to have bring more balance balance along because we had ko who could kind of like cancel out certain people's abilities and stuff like that but it just doesn't work that well and i think if we find a different way to implement his type of abilities but in a different form factor could be wood valorant Valorant needs, but I definitely not going to lie. Hopefully, me and the guys can hop back into Valorant a couple times here soon because I haven't even checked out the new map that dropped recently too. So, really excited to uh, to get back into Valorant. Maybe I can shake it off and stop complaining about if I aim here, the gun sprays everywhere except where I'm aiming. That's the biggest gripe I have with Valorant. But that's a mechanic. That's yeah. Is that a bug or a feature? It's a it's a feature. It's like part of the game because like. <laughs> you got to control the spray you can only shoot like one to three bullets at a time then the accuracy is like negative 12 percent it's just i don't get it because in call of duty if i if i aim the game the gun here it, i'm more than likely going to hit here not outside of my crosshairs i but, think i think if uh, call of duty players cared more about accuracy we see a lot less uh a lot less clips on twitch <laughs> <laughs> probably but moving on to a uh, competitor to Call of Duty, EA had some uh, good news here. Um, I personally think, at least. Um, first off, with DICE, um, they will be co-developing on the next Battlefield single-player campaign while they're able to just basically focus 100% on the multiplayer, which, aka, that's what they're already doing now with Battlefield 2042, and they're doing really good with all the, all the new seasons that have been coming out and bringing good quality content, but they did put Ridgeline Games in the main development of the campaign because it's good to see a campaign returning to the battlefield franchise since we didn't get one this year or whenever battlefield 2042 released when that would have been the perfect game to have a, a story mode like it was russia yeah. versus us like i know it was probably really touchy but you could have had a very phenomenal story set in set in the near future here it didn't stop them from doing it for jack ryan yeah that new season that was all russia ukraine <laughs> they russia, didn't care ukraine, you know. Right. They could have eat it up. Battlefield could take care of that. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, a, it's, it's, loads it's of relevant. Content. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but some other interesting though. Obviously, everyone knows that I played through and I beat the recent Dead Space remake. Um, and EA has been sending out surveys to players asking them if they would be interested in a Dead Space remake for number two and three. And personally, I would say yeah, I'm, I'm for it because the answers, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I the never played any of these three and I just played through the first one for the first time. I enjoyed it, even though the heart attack and the, the adrenaline was just nuts every time I played it. I'm like, fuck, this game is insane. I got to take like 4,000 deep breaths after I'm done playing it just so I can relax myself. But yeah, man, bring on, bring on Dead Space 2 and 3. Maybe this revitalizes that franchise and we can do some spinoffs and see what other uh, games that we can get from that franchise. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I mean... Th the first remake was so well received and I would love to see the studio that did that just keep keep pumping them out keep doing what they're doing I mean it, once again there's something to be said about when the original studio thanks you for your remake yeah I it, mean it, the, it's, it's so it's funny that you say that because like the original people who made the the, the first Dead Space work at um, the company who made Callisto Protocol, which was supposed to be like a spiritual successor to Dead Space, and that game has f flopped it hard. Shit the bed. Yeah, so shit I'm the just bed. like, what Absolutely happened? <laughs> that was funny. But it shit its pants. On the other side here, with a uh, competitor to EA is Ubisoft, and another shooter. yeah, and yeah, and speaking of uh, games that we've had for a hot minute, yeah. so Rainbow Six Siege. So Ubisoft, they're looking to create and support the game for the next ten years. That's good. I, I, I want to hop back into this game here soon. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. I can't. You can't swing a dead cat in my Discord friends list and and without hitting at least three or four people that are playing Siege. <laughs> really? You, you you really can't. You really can't. So just just seeing them still offer up the opportunity for the support, the maintenance, the things that the players who still want to play this game are gonna need. Yeah, and, and they're getting honest. new stuff. Like they're getting map reworks. They're getting new specialists. They're getting new weapons. They're getting yeah. new maps, new reworks of maps. Like they're just 
doing so much, and they're already in year eight, bro. Or eight already, and they want to support for ten more years. That's eighteen yes. years of Rainbow Six Siege. Call, yeah, Call of Duty could never. Call of Duty could never. They couldn't. They couldn't. Rainbow Six Siege will be able to vote by the time <laughs> yeah. they are done, and that's if they decide that they're done after ten years. Yeah, big that's if. if they decide well, we're going to start looking at Rainbow Six Siege as a service, just like Windows and printers and everything like that. <laughs> Rainbow Six Siege as a service. Yep. Just it's World of Warcraft now. Yep, world of world of world of rainbow. Yeah, yeah, basically. It's, but uh, so I mean, we're really happy about that. But we got to move on to some sad news here. Yes. For a minute, unfortunately. So moving into our PlayStation uh, realm, uh, sad. Toru Okada, that's the creator of the PlayStation logo uh, sound, has passed away. Yeah, seventy-three years 73. old. Yeah, long long yeah. time there. Rest in peace there. Yeah. He's a legend, yeah. and it's like yeah. thinking about all the memories, like just loading up the PS One for the for the first time as a kid, five years old, four or five years old, and that that image is forever engraved in my mind. Uh, absolutely, it's it's a it's the sound that no matter what you're doing, you hear it, you know what that's gonna be. Yeah, you you know what it is, you know what you know what's going on. Uh, so yeah, that's super 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 sad. That was uh, Valentine's Day mm-hmm. uh, this year. Uh, so a very very unfortunate uh, unfortunate thing to have to start the PlayStation off with. Second most unfortunate thing <laughs> to happen to PlayStation so far uh, right now is the Returnal PC port. So they're looking at you know we were talking earlier with uh, with uh, concurrent players we were talking about Sons of the Forest 139,000 <laughs> concurrent players games within hours of the release. Returnal has about 7,000 concurrent players uh a little bit more perspective god of war has seventy four thousand. spider-man 66,000. horizon zero dawn 56,000. days gone twenty eight thousand. and returnal is sitting at a nice little measly seven thousand. yeah these are all peak numbers and it's just sad to see that what the fuck happened with this one because returnal was such a great ps5 like launch title more or less and this game it was getting eights and nines out of 10 for ratings and stuff like that and it's a big game but it just doesn't have that like that that known ip like returnal's brand new to the to the world so people are like returnal okay cool i'm, I'm too busy playing sons of the forest over here so i don't want to play returnal yeah i only i only have i only have space in my head for one new game yeah uh and, <laughs> yeah and so yeah that's uh that's super that's super tough to to start off with hopefully uh, if something's going on with the game that they need to fix, they fix it. If uh, you know, if it's just, if it's just people hearing word of mouth going from there, I, I hopefully something fixes that because uh, you hate to see that happen yeah. to, uh, to it, a game. It, it's a game I'm really excited to check out, whether it's on the PS5 or or the PC, because the game looks fucking great. Like it looks like a really good game, and I'm really excited oh, yeah. to check it out. So don't let those numbers skew anybody. Go check out that wonderful game that reviewed really well on the PS5. Maybe just don't play it on PC. Yeah, probably not. Or if you can, only play it on PC because we got to pump those are rookie numbers. We got to pump those numbers <laughs> up, kid. Yeah. But speaking of PlayStation, so PlayStation Plus monthly games for March. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, hope you don't hope you don't want to play a storyline because it's Battlefield 2042 <laughs> coming out. Uh, along with that, we got Minecraft Dungeons, and then we got Code Vein. So. Xbox has just put Minecraft Dungeons and Ghostwire Tokyo on PlayStation Plus. So, liking that. So That's very curious. Cur- these these curious. are both like Microsoft first-party games. They're like, you know, we'll give them to you for free on PlayStation now. I see what they're doing. Yeah. Like, I see what the idea yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. We're bringing it's, our it's games dirty. to X- or to PlayStation it, to show you why we're going to we're going to follow up for Call of Duty. I see it. Here's what could happen if you let us do what we want to do. You get more Minecraft. So, but here, so, but when Sony bought Bungie, the first thing they did is remove Destiny 2 from Game Pass. Yeah, sad because I was enjoying so, that. It happened all because it, it had all of the yeah. DLCs on Game Pass too, and then PlayStation. And now, like, nope. And now, no Lightfall. Yeah, no Lightfall. No Lightfall for you. Not so, yeah, it. a lot of, I mean, I, 
that just that in that internal war with Xbox and and Sony and Sony. Uh, Sony I mean, is so I scared of losing its market share, uh, like in gaming. Like they have been number one for so long, and they don't want to be number be. two. <laughs> they should be. It's tough at the top. Give them a break. Yeah, I mean, look at March <laughs> Madness. How many number one teams go down? It's your turn to go down. God damn it! Be an upset. But- but how can they still expect that with, I mean, Minecraft Dungeon Drop and, I mean, all this, and then the state of play mm. that they that they gave out. State I know, of I sleep, can already you mean? See you just, state of I sleep? can already see you just falling asleep. So we're going to do a rundown of the state of play announcements that we got here. Uh, there's one here that I'm really, really looking forward, looking forward to. Anybody who actually watches is watching this and can see me and can see my face and my arms might know which one I'm going to be excited for. But we've got Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. We've got Capcom, revealed three new characters, uh, Zangief, Lily, and Cammy. Resident Evil 4 trailer confirms the return of Mercenaries mode, which was a fun mode, so that'll yeah. be great. Uh, Destiny 2 Lightfall launch trailer. That's not so much a state of play thing. That's just Destiny being awesome. Yeah. Uh, I have new PSVR games in you know on top of the 178th that they released <laughs> literally <laughs> last week. Uh, so we're looking at Foglands, Green Hell, Synapse, uh, sci-fi stealth game based on the iconic Foundation series by Isaac Asimov, and Before Your Eyes. Uh, so Tetris Effect developers revealed a new project called Humanity. Uh, not sure exactly what Tetris Effect is going to do and see what they can come out with. Um, <laughs> yeah, launching into PlayStation Plush Extra Tier this March. Goodbye Volcano High coming to PS5 and PS4 on June 15th. Naruto Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections gets a new trailer. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> new trailer for Digital Extreme and Airship Syndicate's Wayfinder. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3. This is some news. I, I'm, so I'm, launches I'm on August 31st for, for for PlayStation and PS5. But even then, once again, or, I'm sorry, PC and PS5. But uh, once again, that's not going to be a PlayStation game for me. That's going to be a PC game for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, it was looking like it's not coming to Xbox. Uh, but the developer has confirmed that the Xbox version is still in development, and uh, they just ran into some issues with the split screen co-op. Yeah. So that was so mind blowing. Yeah. Stay strong. Yeah, and it's so crazy because PlayStation like completely just said it's coming to PS5 and PC, and that's it. And the whole they, the whole thing was like, wait a minute, when when did when when was it not coming to Xbox? Like we're really confused. Like, okay, I guess PlayStation's not buying that shit out now. Like PlayStation like, is no, just looking worse. Work, not to Xbox. And then like like there were some like yeah, cryptic just, tweets that were coming out, and then the developer was like, look guys, we never said it wasn't coming. It's coming out. It didn't get delayed. It's just in development. It's going to take a little bit longer because of X, Y, and Z. So we're like, that's okay, lying cool. through omission. Yeah. That's lying through omission. They yeah. would uh, they would be wrong in court for that. But <laughs> we keep talking about Sony Xbox. That wraps up our Sony news. But let's move over to Vic. Yeah. For well, the before Xbox. we do that, I just want to talk about the, the 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 sadness of the state of play in comparison to the Xbox conference that we had and the the Nintendo Direct conference that we had. Those were two phenomenal um, events that happened. Both events had shadow drops in it. Everyone was anticipating Sony to go, oh, this shadow drop is a great idea. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to shadow drop something. Don't even care what the fuck it is. It could They could have shadow dropped anything and it, it would have been great. Nope, they didn't shadow drop shit. The best thing we got out of that was the extended <laughs> gameplay of Suicide Squad which does not really look appealing and I'm like... I want to play this game, but like the game, the gameplay that we've been getting is like just not what I want to play. Like it just looks really weird, in, in a lot of ways. But that's another story. But Destiny 2 trailer might have been the highlight from the whole state of play. I mean, we got to see the Traveler, the big fucking ball thing that's been on the poster of Destiny oh, wait, One, that's... and it actually fucking shoots shit like it's a Death Star. Mm-hmm. Like you finally woke up and came to the battle, bro. Like we could have used you like 47 DLCs ago, and now yeah. you're now you're yeah, finally healed. So that was pretty cool to see, but yeah, nothing else in the entire state of play had me like, oh, yay. So there was controversy, excitement, and just like a, what, the, what are we watching kind of thing. But I agree. Don't, uh, don't, don't sugarcoat it. Tell yeah. us uh, how you really feel. Yeah. Mo- move, moving on to I mean, a company that's here, been like, doing really good. They didn't drop shit. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but let's uh, let's round out our gaming news with uh, some really good news, honestly, here with Xbox. <laughs> Xbox uh, Doom, they are releasing a top-down shooter for mobile. It's releasing uh, in about a month on March 21st called Mighty Doom. So it's from the Doom franchise, and this seems pretty cool. I mean, just another way to enter in the mobile uh, marketplace. 
even better news, guys. We know that Friends and Family Game Pass Ultimate is a thing, and it's being extended to six new countries. Chile, Hungary, Israel, New Zealand, South Africa, and Sweden. Still no United States yet, sad, but I think we'll get it here soon. Maybe maybe it'll come around Games Fest E3. I think that's when we're going to get the official announcement. Hey, guys, it's available now for everybody. Go, go get it. Um, But one sad news thing I guess I would put in here is uh, Tango Gameworks the developer behind Evil Within or recently released uh, um, Hi-Fi Rush. What's up, JD? Welcome to the podcast, bro. Um, hey, but hey. The founder and studio head Shinji Mikami um, is leaving the company. I um, mean, he's been in the gaming industry for like 33 years um, and he's known as, as the creator of Resident Evil. Um, and he's just finally taking a step away from the gaming industry altogether just to, I guess, maybe take a break or and or retire. So, We'll see how that uh, that plays out within Tango GameWorks. See what the next move is. Is Evil Within three still coming? What, what what game are you guys working on over there? But moving on to a what game is that is getting new content, Forza Horizon Five, one of the best racing games of all time, is getting its next expansion because the first one was revolved around the Hot Wheels idea. This one is called Rally Adventure, releasing on March 29th. Um, this coming to the premium add-ons bundle, the premium edition, or the expansion bundle that you may have. If not, you can buy this one as a standalone price of 20 bucks. Um, you discover the rugged Sierra no Nueva, explore six new biomes, including a dramatic crater, abandoned quarry, and an entirely smashable palm forest, which uh, is really exciting to see there. Uh, you do get to build your ultimate rally machine using all new rally parts, including anti anti lag with sp spectacular flame effects and firecracker audio, as well as launch control for that perfect rally start. So that's really awesome to see here. Um, with that, we're also getting a new campaign mode, which I'm excited because I played through and I beat Forza Horizon 5, and this is going to give me a reason to hop back into this game because there's a new story mode here, and it's going to really give you that authentic rally experience better than a lot of these rally racing games that are already out there. And they're honoring the uh, the late um who who was the rally driver that just passed away, drawing a blank. Ken Block. Yes, him. They're going to be honoring yeah. him in the game as well. So this is this is awesome Good. to see. Have you checked out Horizon Five yet? Forza Horizon Five. I have not. I have not been watching it. Uh, I've not been really like, playing anything racing for a really really long time. Okay. Uh, it definitely is still. I still see it when I'm when I'm going through my shops, and I'm looking. I'm like, you know, I could. Yeah. But I'm just. Do I, you have Game Pass? No, we got to get you no, Game no, Pass. I, You're missing out on the best value of gaming. I just sit over here and give Gabe my money on Steam. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, I you can do that if you want. Do. Yeah, it's, it's on Steam. You can go ahead and buy it um, if you want. But, I yeah. mean, Shadows of Mordor and Shadows of War were on sale together as a bundle for ten bucks. Oh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I have both of them on, I don't have on no disc. Space. I have them on disc behind me. So. Um, I really enjoyed Mordor War. I just didn't even touch because I heard it was really bad. So I'll eventually check it out. Um, but another really, really successful game is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Got a 10 out of 10 during its release. World Update, what is that, 12 coming out? This takes us to New Zealand. And it is available now already. So if you uh, are still flying your airplanes around, you can go to New Zealand. Really highly uh, decorated area now. Um, you can soar among New Zealand's snow-kissed peaks across vertical wall uh, fjords and past modern architectural feats. You can explore seven new cities, nine airports, and 62 handcrafted points of interest. And when I tell you, like, these things are really handcrafted because they are down to the, like, pristine detail. Like, this is one of the most realistic looking games I've ever seen. Like, can we get, like, a like a RPG set in, in, in the Microsoft Flight Sim engine? That'd be great. Just saying. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, you yeah. also get to test your pilot skills in three bush trips, three new discovery flights, and four landing challenges. I've seen the one where, like, you have to land by, like, flying over the water, like, this far above the water and, like, fucking land the shit. I'm like, that'd be scary as shit in real life. I'd be pissed if I had to land there. Because <laughs> I don't like water to begin with. Um, but moving on to our next game, yeah, Halo. Of, uh, Tom Hanks, then. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's the one that was he the one that flew the plane upside down drunk? No, no, no that was Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Well, wow, other, other, yeah, different no, movie. No, uh, no, Tom Hanks was the uh, the Hudson. The Hudson, the Hudson yeah. movie. Yep, yep, I remember now. Um, but next game in Microsoft's lineup here is Halo Infinite, and it's getting its biggest update yet with season three called Echoes Within. Drops on March seventh, so 
with, with within like a week or so here comes with a hundred tier battle pass new big team battle pack called oasis which they describe this one as which takes place in a red desert with a small grassy oasis located on the map looks really nice because of the trailer we we got to see all of this already um new arena maps both cliffhanger and chasm the first takes place on a mountain with melting snow around the map while chasm is set in a forerunner con construct um then there's also four new community maps added to the community playlist so community you can basically build maps in forge and if they make it onto the community highlight then they're like oh we like this they pick four of them throw them into a playlist and now even better you can earn xp while playing on these maps which you weren't able to do do before so now excuse me you can play public community don't matter you're still earning that xp you're still grinding at that battle pass as well um, on top of that, there's new equipment. You're getting a shroud screen, which reminds me of like the smokes from Valorant. Um, new yeah. weapon, the bandit rifle, w bandit rifle, which apparently can kill in five shots. So that'll be really quick. And they're actually already talking about that this could be the starter weapon for the Halo um, League, the official um, like CDL, like the official pro league for um, Halo. So that'd be pretty cool. And we're also getting a new game mode called Escalation Slayer, which is just gun game from, like, Call of Duty or whatever game. As soon as you get a kill, it switches to the next gun, and you got to go through, like, 10 guns or whatever to win. 10 or 20 guns, so. Awesome news there. This actually has me excited to hop, maybe hop back into Halo Infinite with the amount of content yeah, we're Yeah, there's here. a lot of new things that we're getting. Actually new, not Call of Duty new. Yeah, not, not Call of Duty. Not certified for you. <laughs> this is actually new stuff. I... I Big fan of the XP from the community playlist. Yeah, that's uh, awesome for sure. Um, there was I don't know, I still didn't see a reason that you couldn't get the XP from that, and it's nice that they finally took care of that. Yeah, yeah, um, nothing, nothing but good news here finally for Halo. Um, but to round out our Xbox Xbox news, I just wanted to throw this in here because this is an upcoming game, um, Starfield. It is now the number one most popular game on Steam's wish list. Steam's wish list. Not Xbox's wish list, Steam's. Might as well sign a deal with with Steam while you're at it. If you signed it with Nvidia, you might as well sign what with Steam. You know what I'm saying? But oh yeah. On top of that, um, I know we're about to hop in and hop into our leaks and rumor. I'm gonna kick it off real quick with a leak and rumor that I just saw before the show. There, the Starfield event could be revealed like the event the event details next week. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, maybe next show we'll talk about it. But if you want to kick us off officially with our leaks and rumors here. I mean, still hyped on, on the Starfield news, uh, yeah. but going back to everyone's favorite bad guy uh, <laughs> this this episode, uh, Sony. So they re they acquired an English-based developer called Ballistic Moon. Uh, so the Ballistic Moon started in 2019. Uh, I was looking at some of the games they have. I mean, I'm in, in the About Us section. I haven't seen much. Uh, but I mean, it, apparently they're gonna be working. They're gonna be working on some games for uh, Sony Interactive, so we'll they see have... how it goes. I mean, the production and business director um, held leadership roles at Sega, THQ, EA, Square Enix, Virtuos. Uh, like, so I, we'll see. I, I mean, yeah, good for them. Uh, hopefully, they come out with something that we will actually be talking about and maybe giving virtual high fives to Sony, mm -hmm. uh, and and we'll see what we got. Yeah. So going back to everyone's favorite hero of mm -hmm. this episode xbox though xbox exclusive recore has appeared with a cryptic social media post we're we gonna see something new what are we yeah what are we thinking I, i'm curious because um I, for those who don't know recore was made by like the developer behind like the metroid series back in the day and um it was a i played like half of the game and like i stepped away this was like a while ago since recore has been out for so long now but it, it, I could see where there's there's a lot of lore that that Recore has that they can kind of build off and kind of just make a game. So will we see a sequel? We could, and especially now with Game Pass because Game Pass wasn't around when Recore first came out. So Recore never had a chance to get to that audience that may not have bought this game. Where now with with Recore two coming to Game Pass day one, you you might have you might gonna have better than seven thousand concurrent players is as Returnal did, but, you know, you, you'll probably get much more than that, which is which is pretty cool to see. But, oh, yeah. It's yeah. going to be super fun. So, But we're hearing some things from Fortnite yeah, man. again. Yeah, I mean, you, you know I love my LEGO stuff. I'm playing LEGO Star Wars, and LEGO has, like, the biggest metaverse. Well, 
what, what's what's even crazier is that two metaverses are coming together with Fortnite and Lego, and a collaboration has leaked online, and it's apparently coming in Chapter 4. So be on the lookout for that, because I'm really curious to see how the fuck that's going to play out. I mean, you're already building shit in Fortnite, and now you're going to be... Like, imagine building walls with actual Legos. I'm, I'm for it. Honestly... Honestly, I might get in. <laughs> I Yo. might get in. If you give me Legos. What's up, Yuri? Shout out, Yuri, I'm guys. In. This is the man who gave us the uh, new intro to our podcast. Hey, so we definitely Yuri, appreciate you uh, coming through. Thank you so much. Um, love that. But, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, Fortnite, awesome. Ever, ever expanding universe there. But Call of Duty, man, is in the news whether it's, it's good, whether it's bad. Um, and this one was really interesting because there was a, a security breach. And basically all of the plans for 2023 have been leaked in 2024, more or less, because COD 2023 is codenamed Jupiter. This is rumored to be an extension of Modern Warfare 2 being developed by Sledgehammer Games. So it's like Modern Warfare 2.5 is what we're getting is what I'm understanding. Um, it's going to bring over all of the current maps, modes and content, whether it's weapons, cosmetics, stuff like that, coming over to that. On top of that, we got a release schedule for the different seasons for the current Modern Warfare 2. So Season 3 is supposed to be March 15th through May 15th. Season 4 is May 15th through July 16th. Season 5, July 17th through September 14th. And for once, we're going to get a Season 6, which is the 15th through the 8th. So we got a release schedule, and not only that, we're getting an idea of what we're getting over the next couple of seasons. Seven new core maps. With I put these in quotes here because... Are they going to be core maps, or are they going to be remakes of other maps that we've already had 17,000 times that they're not? I mean, new? it still makes it a core map. Yeah, I guess, sure. You're adding it to the core they playlist. Say, they didn't say new core maps. Yeah, new they core just maps. They core maps. Um, and the Boy, thing is, they're already saying that they could be rehashes of older maps, which we're kind of already expecting now at this point. But new event for the Halloween is the Haunting of Saba. Um, one licensed operator every season, which means... We're going to be seeing some crossovers, some like meta, whether it's the Predator or Saul again or whatever they decide to do, because they'd be doing some pretty cool oh. ones. Um, more gun, uh, more gunfights, spec op missions, raids, tier one events, um, starting with season three. So season two just started, it means we're not getting to the meat of our content with newer content until season three. Um, one small map arriving with season four, which would be similar to Shipment. So I'm curious to see how that plays out, because I mean I'm not. I hate shipment with a passion. I'm not really excited for another small map. Can we just throw that in the garbage? Like, I don't want to play on another small and map. I'm, I'm, I gotta play devil's advocate, man. Shipment is just, it's, it's controlled chaos. Sometimes it's just <laughs> really fun. Uh, and it's honestly, it's, it's, it, to me, it's like the best weapon grinding map. No, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, if you're grinding camos I mean, and shit it, like that, or sure. challenges, or levels, it's perfect. You're, you're fucking yeah. ranking through them shits. You throw in double XP. You're good. You're golden. Yes, but if I'm yes, trying sir. to play it and have fun, no, I'm be pissed off and might break my controller doing that, Matt. <laughs> um, but to round out our Call of Duty news, at least 240 bundles are in the way, and that's 70 per season, roughly. So, more money for people to spend on. Go have fun buying bundles. I have yet to buy a single bundle in the game. It's funny. You can pull up your your my my bundle section, and they're all the free ones I got during Christmas and New Year's. I have yet to buy a single one. I bought the Godzilla bundle. For Warzone, for, yeah. for, for the old one, yeah. Straight up. For the old one, yeah. Straight up bought yeah. that Godzilla bundle. I love Godzilla. I'm a huge fan of Godzilla, and I straight up bought that. Godzilla and King Kong on Caldera was the highlight of my Warzone <laughs> career, and I am not It was the highlight. To... It was the only highlight. I loved that. Yeah. I learned how to beat him. I learned how to do everything I needed to do, and I was fucking king. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah, yeah. I hope they do more crossovers like that, especially if they're saying that we're going to get them one per season. I'm excited for that. Yeah, for sure. yeah. I want to. I want to see what they do uh, with that. Uh, hopefully, when they bring back Verdansk, I can still get my, uh, you know, Rambo skin back. But it's okay. Right. I'm, so I'm not bitter. Yeah, man. So that's all of our leaks and rumors. So I mean, what did we say earlier? Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. I mean, we got better ingredients. Better, 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 in, better ingredients. Better developers. Better employment. Better leadership, better games. That's what we're going to get. <laughs> but we want to thank better everyone. Game. Yeah, exactly. Better better, exactly. Uh, we want to thank all of our live audience today that came through and checked us out. We appreciate every one of you guys um, and everyone who checks us out later on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. But, um, Scott, where can everyone find you at? 
Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Very simple. Scott Roby. You can find me on Instagram. Scoby1. You can find me on Steam, Battle.net, and Discord. Scoby1, 9369 on Discord, 1178 on Battle.net. And then you can find me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Scoby1. There you go. And of course, everyone, check me out at Twitter at Mr. Never Chillin underscore Xbox is X Never Space Chillin. You want a game, party up, hit me up there. Facebook is Vic Brew Rocker for any questions, concerns, or if you want to come on the show. And twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Never Chillin for all of my single player playthroughs and some competitive multiplayer playthroughs, depending on uh, how I'm feeling that day. You know, I'm currently playing Lost and Random, soon to be Atomic Hearts, and Rage 2, so be on the lookout for those. But we want to thank everyone again. But until next time. Peace. Cheers. Press start podcast.